Welcome to the Bisbee channel. Today we are going to show you how we transform this basement room into what we think is an amazing workout room. Um, specifically how we changed the flooring that really made it a difference in the overall um, feel of the room as well as the cleanliness. Um, this flooring really changes the aspect rather than working on a carpet, you know, you get sweat in there. It gets hot and sweaty and stanky. It just doesn't feel sanitary. So compared to this rubber flooring, um, you can easily come in here, quickly vacuum to get off dust, as well as just kind of quickly Swiffer it, spray it down. And it really keeps a good clean feel and keeps your hygiene, you know, where it should be. Um, I wish I said like this room was for me, but if you guys all know me, this is definitely for my wife. It's for the wife. Oh, uh, 20 shekels. Right. So let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, we had to tear up all the carpeting. And then once we did that, we have to come back and we have to remove these tack strips. Now to remove those, you're just going to need a crowbar here. And uh, I would use a claw hammer as well. But definitely make sure you wear safety glasses as chips will be flying. And then just come back with a quick broom to make sure you get all that debris picked up because you do not want that left. We did a lot of research when it came to picking out what flooring we were going to put in here. We knew we wanted some type of rubber flooring um, specifically for working out. Really need to keep you know things clean um, and also to protect the floor and our weights when you're dropping them down. You don't want to drop it down on bare concrete. Um, it's going to chip the concrete or the weight. One of the two is going to have to give. So we did our research. There was that you know the snapping cubes, and they just they don't really hold up quite well. It, you know you can use them maybe over top of this if you need a little bit more cushion if you're using heavier weights. Um, but it just wasn't gonna do the job that we wanted it to. And then um, I came across a video by Jeremy Sears on YouTube where he changed his garage into a gym and he used livestock mats um, that are really heavy duty and thick. And I researched those. I thought, man, that, that's pretty much what we're looking for. But with the dimensions of the room, um, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to cut those really well to fit, you know, these molding pieces and different things like that. And I didn't want to make more work than I needed it to. So I found these online and I can't be more pleased right now. Um, but it did everything we wanted it to. Um, I measured it and it's only like five eighths, half inch, five eighths thick. Um, it's really flexible and you can really manage it quite easy to get it into the places that you need it to go. So, um, and it's easy to cut with just a simple razor blade. So um, this really fit the niche that we needed to get done in here. So um, pretty happy. Okay, so you can see how these rolls just come up with shrink wrap around them and we just undid those, brought them to the edge of the room, fit them there and unrolled them. Now they come in, I believe, about 25 foot rolls and we only needed about 24. So when it came to the edge, what I did is I moved the piece right up to the edge where I thought it would fit, made a quick mark, pulled it back, took my straight edge, made a chalk line, double checked it to make sure it was gonna fit into the spot where I needed it to. Then I come back with a two by four, lay it down on the ground and take my straight edge um, and razor blade right down there right on that chalk line making sure to make a nice clean cut and then what we can do is we can bring that back and now we can tuck it in there underneath the molding and transition it into the carpet we're going to fix that later on but um, we just want a good clean fit now we want to continue that throughout the room but now we're going to come to the end piece and that last piece most of the time walls aren't on a perfect 90 degree angle so it's not going to fit in there perfect and to keep things simplistic and not needing many tools, all I did was I took my tape measure, measured every about foot to two foot, and I made uh, post-it notes and I put those on the wall. Now, when I did that, I was able to take my straight edge, measure to where that post-it was, and now I could find a straight line from those and the changing dimensions. And I was able to scratch in here with the chalk 
and make another uh, line here for me to come back with my straight edge. Now this I just went ahead and I used the level piece there and my razor blade and cut it uh, right on that line. Now I didn't protect it underneath because I'm going against the concrete but you might need to do that. Then I came back to that molding piece and I finished with a quick cut here because I'm going to come back and fit that to the molding. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that off and then I'm going to make that piece and move it into place. Now if you made the measurement proper it should slide in here. Also to make it a little bit easier I remove that molding piece because that will let me you know if I'm a little shy here or there it's going to tuck underneath that molding and hide it but you really want to make sure that that piece fits as tight as possible that way you remove the possibility of any slippage uh, and sliding in the future. And like I said, with a little bit of guidance, it should fit in there and we'll get a nice clean, tight. Tight like a tiger. Fit, like I might make a few adjustments to get in there, but if you measured it right, it should come out proper for you. Now after we're done with this, we're going to come back to that other end piece and we're going to make a quick cut right there. And when we do that, we'll be able to just slide that existing piece right in and we'll adjust that later on with some actually scrap pieces. We'll make that work. But just make a quick cut, tuck it underneath the molding. And now we can come to the fun part. It's where the closet comes in and there's these little uh, outserts with some molding. Now, I just made sure that I cut that piece right to where the molding was, and then I was able to lay that down. Now, I come back with actually a, a little tool here to help push it down, but I just keep whittling it away around the molding, um, making sure I protect the molding when I make the cuts. But you can see it, it came out quite well. Um, there was a little bit of a gap here or there that I had to fill in, but with again, with some scrap cut off. But came out quite well and actually the other one came out even better after I had a first test run with this. Now to make those cuts around the trim work a little bit easier. So we can do this the easy way or the hard way. I actually didn't have this tool um, when I went ahead and did this job. Um, my in-laws actually gave it to me as a gift for Christmas present this year and I thought I'd share it because this would have made it really easy. So you can see you bring it down to the base and you impress it onto there and it forms to whatever form you put it in there and then it's got a simple little trigger here that you lock into place and it really I mean once you lock it holds it quite well then you could have taken that chalk traced that line around and then cut that chalk line so would have made it a little bit easier around the molding rather than the finagling but uh things that could have been brought to my attention yesterday Actually, from what we did, if you don't have this, you can still get a pretty good job. Um, as you can see right here, it came out quite well, but I thought I'd share that because it's a pretty nifty little tool. Now over in this portion, you can see this is where that jets back. And we have just a little bit of a cutout here. So instead of using, I had a whole other roll really that I had to go, but instead I just used some scrap to fill this. And there is slight gaps here. But it's such a small area, I just felt like that would be sufficient because we got the bike here and then the water area. But really that finished off the rest of it. Okay, now we're back over to where we were talking about that carpeting. And what we did was, well, we didn't. Um, we actually had new carpeting put in and what they did is added a tack strip right here and then tucked it so we have a nice transition now came out well and here is the final setup of the room and the floor all finished okay so that wraps up the install of the floor and you can see how well it's come out around the molding uh, even the pieces put together in the back have come out quite well. The transition with the carpet and the floor overall. 
Now I wanted to share with you a few things that we've learned um, from working out on this floor. Um, specifically, it's held up quite well. Um, it's had weights dropped down on it. We've swept it, cleaned it, disinfected it for over two years now. And it, it's, there's no chip out or anything like that. Um, but there's a few things that come up when you're trying to work out on it that I wanted to share with you. So one of the things I wanted to share is the floor is actually, it's not too bad. Like you can work out on your knees on it fine. I mean, you can handle it, but these cushioned kind of yoga mats are pretty nice if you're doing, you know, heavier workouts on the knees, as well as just your regular sit-ups and push-ups. It is kind of nice. We still have plenty of, you know, yoga mats uh, to get the workouts done that we needed, but you can work directly out on the floor, but um, the cushion ones do come in handy. So just one thing though, if you do put this rubber flooring down and you use these little sliders to do workouts, you'll want to get, uh, this is just an eighth inch piece of hardy board. Uh, you can buy like a four by eight sheet. It's not too expensive. Um, I just cut it down specifically because with all the shutdowns and stuff, um, my daughter had virtual Zoom for her dance class and she needed this for tap dance. Um, but then my wife got these and we left it in here because you can see it slides amazing on this compared to with the cover taken off, it won't slide. And with the cover on, I mean, it will, but it doesn't like it. So one thing that you might want to add if you do any type of workouts with, with these sliders, so. Yeah. And you can easily flip this up and put it up against the wall and get it out of the way. Well, that should wrap everything up for this video. I will leave some links in the description for tools that are required for the job. If you do use those, thank you. Those do help us out. I'm going to also though leave a link to the website of where we got this flooring. Um, they are not a sponsor or anything like that, but it's a product I believe in. I've used it for two years now, and I'm quite happy with it. So I want to go ahead and share that with you guys. Um, so you can go ahead and get something uh, that will help you guys out in your gym project. Um, I believe they'll do some discounts, at least when I purchased it. If you do get standard size rolls, I'm not sure if they're still doing that, but it might be worth a phone call for you guys to check that out. Um, for me, it was pretty decent amount of savings. And as you can see, it's not difficult to cut it down. So um, thank you as always for supporting the channel and watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please think about it. It really does help us out as a channel and helps us keep creating content like this. Well, I'm just gonna wrap it up Till next time, thanks for buzzing by. Take care. Dad at home. A busy beat channel. Now I gotta put this back on before my wife gets home and goes to use them.